So the new sound bank is great, excellent. What we're going to check out next is the players. These are the players here. We have the dual arpeggio. Now the players, you can't just actually, you have to actually have an instrument in here. So let's go ahead and uh, drag an NNXT. Got the grand piano going. Now if we go to the players, you'll see there's the arpeggio, the dual arpeggio, the no echo, and the scales and chords. So to use these, you don't actually route them to the instrument, you just drag them right above the instrument. If you flip this around, you'll see there's nowhere to route it. And so um, you can fold these up or do whatever. kind of go crazy with it. Pretty crazy, you know, I'm doing that with one or two fingers. Um, now the way these work is if you put focus on them, nothing happens, okay? You have to actually put focus on the instrument below them. Now another thing that I've discovered about the players is if you go, let's go to the NNXT and let's put some, uh, here, let's put some quick note data in here. Just put a quick major scale in here. Let's put that C major scale in there. How much more exciting can you get? Okay, so there's my C. Let's play that, the L. Let's drag this out. So this is going to scale. I'm going to drag it out to eight bars here. And uh, so this is basically a you know C C major scale on the grand piano. Now, you can see I can bypass that. Now, where the true power, I think, comes in with these players is this button, Send to Track. Now, if I click this, what it's going to do is it's actually going to, let me close this down, it's going to mute the original MIDI data, which is just a simple C major scale, and it's going to automatically create a new lane with the arpeggio MIDI data. So that part of it, to me, is, is pretty powerful. So now you can just turn this thing off and you have your arpeggio. You have the MIDI data for your arpeggio and that's velocity, sensitivity and everything which you can you know set up over here and then you know you can go down here add you know maybe add some groove to it. Um, you know all kinds of stuff. Rearrange it but the ability to to put that into MIDI data, I think is is pretty powerful. Um, another thing is this this bar right here, this very top bar that has the bypass, direct record, and send a uh, send a track. This is universal. In other words, if I add another player, let's say I add the uh, you know the scales and chords, if I put it right over the top, it's going to replace it. Now that scale, and you can see it's given me some. Uh, it's giving me some triads there, and then of course we can again send a track. Okay, so now it mutes the original. We double click on here, you can see we have our triads. So we have the C major chords all the way up to scale. So pretty cool, pretty powerful. Um, actually, probably a good way to learn um, music theory, possibly. Now um, you can add these together. Um, if you drag right there, um, you can do that. You can add all three of them, but the thing is, is this uh, this original? Uh, but this is kind of the header. This is the header for the players. It's gonna this header is the same. It doesn't matter what player you put in here, even if you put all three. In other words, each player is not getting its own header here. So this controls all of them. So let's do that whole thing again. Let's delete this. Let's unmute this. Go ahead and play that. Fuck! 
be careful with this thing. All right, but just to show you that uh, send a track. Now, if you double click this, it's going to be chaos. I'm all for moderation. You know, maybe using these players simultaneously is a bad idea, but the fact is that you can, the ability to, to, to just instantly kind of drop into the track the MIDI data from the players, I think, is, is pretty powerful. I don't know. The players are, I, I don't know how much I'm going to use them. I might use the arpeggio a little bit, and the note echo is kind of cool. Like I say, these don't route. There's no routing involved. And so let me uh, put another instrument in here. Let's put a bass in here. And so as far as I know, how you control what instrument these are affecting is you take the header, not the devices, but the header, and you have to drag it right above. Okay, I guess not. Um, I thought that you drug it. Sure, why not? The MIDI data that has been created with the players when used with the regroove mixer, you know, there's some possibilities in there. What you want to be careful of is, like I say, moderation. You don't want, you know, it is a tool. These buttons over here, very powerful. I love them. I love them. Don't get me wrong because I like to work on the mixer one part of the time. But I'm always confused on if they're on or off. Just make them red, okay? Let's say I turn the EQ on. See how that lights up red right there? It's like a light. You can see that, okay? These buttons, I wish they would light up because if I come here and I got half on, half off, I'm like, I'm not sure if I'm closing or opening stuff. Just little things that, that I constantly, and I know I, sh I should know this, but it's still like after using this program for years, I still get, when this is half on and half off, and I come into the mixer, I'm like, okay, what's open and what's closed? I can't freaking tell. Just little things like that. All these little things really, really add up. I still would love to see buttons down here for every single panel. This F8 panel, it's still floating around over here. It's still floating around, and I would, why not have a button that opens this panel down here in the, in the, in the transport panel? That's something I went over with the Reason 8 review. But just little things. So yeah, that's, that's basically kind of my kind of general uh, review. Like I say, it's not a good or a bad review. It's actually, I think this, this is a good, these are good tools. These, these, uh, these players are really good tools. And the darker interface, the pitch correction is really, really cool. I believe the, the line sixes are gone. You know, Reason 8, they gave us these guitar amps. I don't think I've used them once. But yet you can buy them in the Propeller Head web store. I know I'm getting new sounds through the Reason, uh, you know, through the sound bank, but it would be nice to have a new device or at least some updates of current devices, you know, have this stuff updated, you know, more streamlined. I think the sequencer has actually uh, matured quite a bit. You know, I, I really kind of like the sequencer look, especially with the darker interface from what I've seen. And the mixer, I still want to be able to, to widen these channels or to collapse them into a mix bus, stuff like that, you know. I think that uh, this should be a name your own price upgrade just because there's no new devices. There's no, this NNXT is great, but I want something that I can just use with one sample, loop it up, kind of like, this is a great multi-sampler, but I want something like an updated sampler. I can just specifically focus on one sample, one sound. The Korg, uh, the redrum definitely needs updated. I can't see what's going on. I guess I would have liked to see some of the old devices upgraded. But maybe they should offer something like, you know, this upgrade, there's no new devices. Yes, there's players, but there's no new devices. You know, you pay the 129 for an upgrade and go ahead and here's a $50 or $100 voucher a propeller head store to put towards a rack extension. Or this is a voucher that you can only use on a propeller head rack extension. That way they're getting the money anyway. I just feel kind of 
between you know the 129 for reason eight and the 129 for reason nine that's you know that's nearly three hundred dollars and there's not a whole lot of difference between seven and nine and i feel kind of like well that's two upgrades and i i still feel myself i was very very ambitious and excited for reason nine i was expecting more but again it's reason nine you know I just honestly feel like the whole Reason workspace kind of needs overhauled at this point. Anyway, this is Chill Computer Guy. Uh, sorry about the ramble. We'll probably cut this up, but we'll try to have this done the next couple of days. All right, Chill Computer Guy. We'll see you next week.